and today we're going to be doing our install of the flex power mat on this beautiful class A motorhome. After figuring out exactly where you're going to lay out your panels, you'll need to give the roof a real good cleaning with either a light detergent or if it's a rubber roof then you'll want to use a product that Dicor makes for cleaning the top of roofs for RVs. Now you want to take the panel, lay it down exactly where you want it, make sure it's placed right where you want it. You'll want to cut the bottom of the paper, pull off about two to three feet of it, as you see being done here right now, and stick that bottom edge. Then you'll want to roll up the other side and pull the rest of it down and it should flop right exactly into place for you and make sure you put pressure on all parts of the panel and so it's down firmly. Now that you have the panel down nice and flat, it's time to put the perimeter on. I like to start with the both of the end caps. You can start on either end. Here we've got the bottom end, and we're gonna make sure that we line up the rubber sticking out from the panel into the second groove of the end cap. Once you have that in place and lined up, then you can go ahead and install the self-tapping stainless screws. Now on the sides, You'll want to pull off the clear protective covering to expose the micro sealant and then go ahead and lay it on down and put pressure on the edge so it's down firmly. Now we're going to put the head end cap piece on. On the head end cap piece we're also going to be putting on the wire junction box. As you'll see we'll be sliding the wires through the hole at the bottom of the wire junction box sliding it on down. Then we want to install the two stainless steel screws that are a quarter inch longer than the other screws that you'll see in the packaging. And screw them on down so they're nice and firm. Now that we have the end caps on, it's time to put the rest of the sides down, pull the plastic covering off the micro sealant, and then we want to start with the end butting up against the end cap first and putting pressure all the way down and making sure that the edges line up nicely. Then we want to do the same on the other side. Pull the plastic covering off, start on the other end cap, so if there's any slight difference of a gap, we want that to be in the center. With the roof being subject to hot and cold up there, having a small gap is, is okay. We want the rubber to be able to expand and contract the whole ball of wax there and allow water to go flowing out even though we do have water channels built into the side rails. Now we got a chance to take a look at this multiple panel install up on top of this big class A beautiful motorhome. As you'll see our gapping, measuring of the edges, we've got about a one inch gap in between each panel. Also take a look at the wiring coming out of the slots from where the junction block goes up on top of the rubber there. 
Now we're going to take a look at our six panels up on top of this roof and how the six panels are wired, wired in parallel. As you see the camera moving around, you'll see we're going from the far end up to a panel that is closer to the wiring that's going to go down to the charge controller. To get to the charge controller, we're going to go down the refrigerator shaft, which is this big large black cap that you see shining. You'll see the wires going underneath and down that shaft. When we go down the refrigerator shaft, uh, on the side of the refrigerator inside the unit, there is usually a nice uh, uh, wood cabinetry that we can uh, place the charge controller at. So we'll, we'll cut our hole for the charge controller there. Uh, pull the wire to it, hook the wires up, finish going back down the shaft, and then straight to the batteries from there. <laughs>